Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Dr. Maureen Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. But we're talking about grace as a supernatural of God. God has put dreams in your heart. And those dreams that God has put in your heart, uh, they're impossible in the natural. It takes the supernatural of God. And we've been called into a new covenant. And in this new covenant, it is the Holy Spirit now that is in charge. And uh, Jesus already did the work. And so in the new covenant, we're in what he's done. And so we are in the supernatural of what he's done. And God's already fulfilled our destiny, the word of God says in the invisible so we're not to look at what we see we're to look at what we don't see we're to look at what the spirit of God is revealing within us and as I said uh, uh, that the Lord as light sh shines on us and gives us wisdom and revelation but he floods the eyes of our heart with light that we would know our destiny. So there is that, that vision, that's their picture that God places within us so that we can embrace that. But when God calls us to do something, it's impossible in the natural. And you know, when I, I heard about uh, how our year of television and, and how the, they, they said I'm dominating the uh, Christian television networks. And, and, and it was like, me? But it's but what I see is that what God called me to do, the vision, the passion inside of me, was an impossibility in the natural. Because my my history itself, I mean in third grade I was uh, I <laughs> and two boys were taken out because we were in the slow reading class. We, uh, I could barely read, and I had dyslexia, and so it was really hard. They, I had to go to a class to learn how to speak because I had speech impediment in my life. I have stuttered so bad in seventh grade, I never talked the whole year. And, uh, and, uh, and so all these things that, that were there happening in my life that said, you can't talk, you can't speak. I, uh, well, when Dr. Tom and I got married and, and uh, we'd go and meet other couples uh, while he was going to college, uh, before I'd even get there, I'd say, now, if anybody, don't you leave me. And if anybody comes up to talk to me, you answer them. So me being on television, be teaching and speaking is an impossibility in the natural realm. My brother even said, I know there is a God because my sister was never marked for success. So, <laughs> and I, so, I mean, all of this is what God is wanting us to know, that he's put dreams in us. And if we look at them in the natural, we would quit. We would never step out to what God's calling us because we would know our lack our, our, our inabilities in the natural, but then it is God. When God says, wow, uh, you're being blessed, you're speaking, you're teaching, and, and how it grabs the hearts of people. And, and, and they said that when they watch me, they can't turn it off. They have to stay on for the whole show. It just draws them in, and they're, 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 they're just entangled with what I'm saying. Well, it's not me. It's the Holy Ghost. And so, but God. And that's a new covenant. It's about but God. And God wants you to know that. Praise God. If you can do it, you don't need God. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that it's the eyes of our imagination that's where the dreams are, are open to us and revealed to us that God can show us what, what, what he's given us and flood us with it. And we can experience the revelation of that dream that he put in our heart. But, you know, think about this. You think about the impossibility. God said to Abraham, you're going to have a child. And at 100 years old, when it was an impossibility for the dream that was in him, he had a child. And Sarah was 90 years old. Impossibility. You think about uh, Joseph. God says he's going to rule, and his brothers are going to bow down to him. Well, Joseph was a slave in, in Egypt, 
And then he was thrown into prison for two years, but he became second in line to the Pharaoh. Impossibility, but God gave him a dream in him, and then he taught him how to interpret dreams by the Spirit of God. Whatever God has put in your heart, whatever dream he's got in you, it's an impossibility in the natural, but you don't live by what we see. We live by the word of God. We live by what God has said. And so we're talking about the new covenant that we're in, the covenant of grace. It's a covenant of the supernatural in your life. But it's already been done in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So you're not depending on what you do, but you're depending on what he's already done in your life and what he has for your destiny. Every season that you're in, he's already set you up to win. He's already gone ahead of you, and he's already fulfilled that, that season in your life, and he already set you up now with everything you need to be successful in it. Praise God. Uh, God has placed dreams inside of you, but God will show you the steps to take to make them a reality in your life. And, you know, the dream should create actions in your life. Okay, a dream with no a actions is an, is an uh, uh, hallucination. It's a, you're, you're not going anywhere. It's never going to happen because grace is full of action. It says grace alone empowers me. Grace has full of energy. It propels me ahead. It, it gets me fired up when I connect to the dream to do. And so the word of God says, I want you to grab what the word is saying. And, and Proverbs 16.9 says, a man's heart plans his way. But the Lord directs the, his steps. Uh, he establishes his steps. So in the dream, you, you should be planning in your heart your, your destiny, what you're going to do. Plan out your days. That's what God says now. You make plans because you're called to build, to create, to do. But as you do that, then God will direct your steps. He will establish you as you go forth. But if you sit there and do nothing, nothing's going to ever happen. And so, hallelujah, begin to connect to the dream in you and allow what God placed in you now to create uh, uh, steps to take to achieve it, making plans. Proverbs 16.9 says this, within, a, within your heart, you can make plans for your future. Make plans for your future. Step out that now you're going into two, uh, 2019. Have plans for the year. Get your calendar out and begin to plan your days and what you're going to do each day. Make your plans in your heart for your future. How, nothing gets done if you don't make plans. Hallelujah. But then it goes on to say, and don't be in fear of it. It's this God is, no, the Bible says, hallelujah, you make plans for your future in your heart, but the Lord chooses the steps you're going to take to get there. So you can trust God as you're making the plans. The Lord, as you go forth in your day, God will say, go this way, go that way. The Holy Ghost is your GPS. He's going to guide and lead you as you surrender those plans to the Lord, as you give them to God. Hallelujah. You know, Philippians 2.13 says this, for it is God who works in you. So he's working in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure, the destiny he has planned for you to produce. You're here for a purpose on this earth. God called you, and now you need to get established in that call and go forth in the activity of the call. Hallelujah. I love the way this scripture says in the Amplified. It says this, for it is not your strength, but it is God who effectively, effectively at work in you, both to will and to work. That is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. Oh my goodness, God is saying now, I put the season in your life, the destiny that I have for you, all right? 
I say, now start making plans to fulfill it, but it's not going to be you, but it's going to be God in you. It's not going to be your strength, but it's going to be my strength, God says. It's, I'm going to strengthen you because it's what I put in you to create, and you need my supernatural strength to run the race, to fulfill it, so they don't depend on your own strength, but Draw on my strength. It's not going to be your energy. Hallelujah. But it's going to be God's energy. And you're going to embrace that and bind yourself to his strength, his energy, and his creativity to fulfill the destiny that God put in you as you begin to run that race. And of course, the enemy comes at you at all force. He comes immediately to steal that word from you when you say yes to your destiny. He comes immediately to persecute you and try to get you to quit, to throw in the towel, throws everything at you, but the kitchen sink at times. But guess what? God, Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, because I have overcome. So you hold on to God and uh, watch you run that race with tremendous joy, unspeakable, and full of glory as you keep your eyes on him. Hallelujah. You know, it was really interesting because as I was thinking about this, that gives God strength. I know when uh, Living Word Bible Church here, when, when it first began and God visited Dr. Tom and and he told him, showed him the three domes and told him he was going to build a church to build strong homes and families. And then God just came on him and just began to fill him and fill him until he thought, I can't take any more. And then God said to him, I've given you all the energy you need, so don't ask for any more to do it. God gave him the energy he needed to do this work in the season that we were in to build this work here. And so it's God in you. And you know, in my own life, I dealt with, my family was not a high energy type family. I had chronic fatigue and, and I had rheumatoid arthritis when I was 45. God miraculously healed me. But, but you know, you can fall, you get born again and you can fall in, back into your lifestyle of what was in your family and talk about that and bond to that instead of saying, no, Jesus took that at the cross. He nailed it to the cross. He took that fatigue. He took that chronic fatigue. He took that, that lack of energy. He took that laziness. He took that slugger. He took that at the cross. He broke that curse, defeated it, and it is not mine anymore. And I'm not under the, the generational curse curse of my forefathers. I'm not under that DNA. I have a new DNA, and God is my Abba Father, and I have his energy. I have his strength. I have his power to run the race now. I'm not looking at myself. I'm not looking at the way I was. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it is that fight of, hey, God doesn't lie. Now, the devil wants you to think he's lying to you. But you have to know the enemy is a liar, not God. Wow, okay, hallelujah, let's move on. So you think about, I thought about Moses. Moses wasn't called into the ministry until he was 80 years old to get all of God's people out of Egypt, to get them with all the silver and gold of Egypt, to go and cross the Red Sea when God separated the Red Sea, and to go through the wilderness for 40 more years and take care of all those people. It had to be the energy of God. It doesn't care what season you're in. You have more than enough energy. Caleb said, when he was 80 years old, going into the promised land, he said this, I have more energy than I had when, than when I was 40. And he said, so give me the toughest area, the hardest area to conquer, because I want that to be my inheritance. Oh my gosh. 
So, you know, as we get older, the enemy says, well, you're just older. You don't have the energy you had when you were in your 20s. And all these lies, and we, we can believe those lies. And we have to say, nope, stop it. No, I'm like Caleb. I have more energy now than I had when I was young. Because I have the energy of God. Give me the toughest thing to conquer. Hallelujah. We need to be bold in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then Proverbs 16.3 says, Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God, not in yourself. So before you, you uh, uh, make your plans, you put your trust in God. And you pray and you commit it to God. Hallelujah. And then it goes on, then every plan you make will succeed. Every plan will succeed because you gave it to him to give you the way, right? Psalms 37.3 says, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Oh my goodness, his faithfulness, it's so powerful in your life when you're making plans. First of all, you don't want to get into fear. Well, maybe if I, if I start making plans in my heart, maybe they won't be what God wants. What did God say? He said that you make your plans, you commit to me, you trust in me, you make your plans, but I will direct your path. So make plans. How to, don't get into fear and, and perfectionism. God doesn't demand perfectionism. He's the perfect one. And you needed a savior because you're not. So get going and he will take over. But you got to be running. You got to be moving. You got to be doing. You can't be doing nothing. Woo, hallelujah. In your destiny, in the season that you're in. The Lord says this. Feed on his faithfulness. So don't forget about that feeding. Another says, fix your heart on the promises of God. Get your eyes on those promises and you will be secure feasting on his faithfulness. Feasting. Oh my goodness, in my own life, I have found that as I start running the race and the enemy throws the doubts and the unbelief, he throws the negative at us and everything, you know what he does, you know, but you know what? I feast on his faithfulness. I begin to remember what God has done and how faithful he is. The word of God says this, that, uh, you know, think about David. David, when, when he came to Ziglag and he had gone off to fight with the Philistines, but they sent him home and said, no, we don't want you. And he got back to Ziglag and, and the enemy had been there and had burned down the town, had taken all their stuff, taken all the women, taken all the daughters, taken all the sons of all the men and had left with all the goodies and everything. And and David's men were so full of grief and they were so, so emotionally wiped out that they thought about stoning King David. He wasn't king yet, David. But David said to himself, hold it. Let me go and encourage myself in the Lord. Let me go away and build myself in God. What was he doing? The word of God says this, hallelujah, that we run into the heart of God and we hide ourselves in his faithfulness. Hallelujah. And then he strengthens and comforts us and he empowers us to cease what God has already promised us. And uh, hallelujah, his unshakable hope. Feasting on his faithfulness. He ran and hid into God's heart, into God's faithfulness. And he hid into the faithfulness of the Lord, feasting on his faithfulness. And, and I thought about this in my own life as feasting on it. Whenever the enemy comes and you're running your race and you're making your plans, and you get going and of course the enemy comes immediately, the word says to, to uh to steal that word from you, to persecute you because of the word, and we don't get we don't give him any attention, but we begin to to feast. And I go back and I remember uh hallelujah when 
when God called me to speak and to teach his faithfulness and visited me and said, this is your destiny. And, in, and then he opened doors and began to have that happen. When I was 30 years old, I began to do that. Uh, and, uh, and God putting that together. And then at 45, I had rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, uh, it's an incurable crippling disease. Feasting on his faithfulness in two months. I was totally healed of that and set free from that. Dr. Tom had a heart attack. So going back and remembering his faithfulness and all that he's done, Dr. Tom had a heart attack in his 30s and uh, before the church ever started in that. But feasting on his faithfulness, God miraculously healed him. The doctor said that he had a heart of a 25-year-old after he got healed. Hallelujah. He got healed of throat cancer when he was probably 50. The church was going, and, and, he, um, and he was diagnosed with throat cancer, and God miraculously healed him on that. He just stood on the word for several months without saying anything about it, and then when he went to the specialist, it was gone. Feasting on his faithfulness. The time that Scott was 12 years old and got hit in the eye with a hardball. And, and his eye was dying and they were going to have to take it out and give him a glass eye. But when I went in, hallelujah, when they were going to plan his surgery, his eye was totally healed and restored. And he still has his, his eye. Feasting on his faithfulness. Hallelujah. All along our life, running the race, the people God brings it across our path, the doors that he opens, the things that he does to set us up to fulfill our race, feasting on his faithfulness. We go back and we remember those things. And feasting on his faithfulness. Oh, my goodness. And I love the scripture. I've been quoting it, but I'm going to say it right now. Hebrews uh, 6 for uh, 18, and you know, uh, Romans 5, 5 says, hope does not disappoint us. And I always say that because without hope, you don't have faith. Because the Bible says now faith is a substance of things hoped for. So hope is the beginning of our faith walk. And, uh, but hope, God's hope never disappoints us. So we pull on God giving us everything. We're surrounded with all these gifts in the kingdom of God and our new covenant. And then we go and we open them up and we got his faith. We got his hope. We got his love. We got it all to win. Uh, but we got to get it. We got to draw on it. We got to unwrap it. And, and embrace it as our own. And God says this in, in Hebrews 6, 18. Oh, this is so, this is a scripture I've been living in, living on for months, is this. So it is impossible for God to lie. So I say that. It's impossible for God to lie. Just say it out loud. For he, for we know that his promises and his vow will never change. His promises, they're yes and amen in Christ Jesus, and they won't change. I'm in a new covenant, and in this new covenant, it's blessing and blessing, and I'm full of grace now because I'm full of Christ Jesus, and so I'm full of blessings in that I go from blessing to blessing in my day. Jesus spoke blessings over my day. His promises never change because he made a vow, and he says, and we and now we have run into his heart. Whose heart? God's heart. And we hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort for, for he empowers us to cease what's already been established ahead of time. It's already been established. Your destiny is already done and been established ahead of time. And we cease it. We grab it as our own. We all, we take the kingdom by force, by violence, the word of God says. We are fighters because we won. We're not fighting flesh and blood, remember. We're fighting the good fight of faith, and we grab what's already ours. It's already ours. It's already been established ahead of time. It's his unshakable hope that is, it is the anchor of our soul. Oh, my goodness. I get so excited. I don't want to stop. I'm too happy. Hallelujah. And then Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8 says this, Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and, and whose hope is in God, is in the Lord. 
Blessed are you. Now the Bible says, cursed is a man who trusteth in a man. And so as I pray the prayer word and I speak the word of God, I say, I trust totally in you. It's you that gives this to me. You, the Bible says, you make me rich. The Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, you made me heal. You're my, you're my great physician. And hallelujah. The Bible says that you get, uh, gives me favor. And whatever he gives, I'm going to generously give away. God says he's, he blesses me that I can be a blessing. Hallelujah. Does this excite you? Oh, my goodness. So, I, oh, hmm. time. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, 13 says this. God will continuously re revitalize you and planting within you the passion to do what pleases him. That word revitalize means re-energizing you. It means that he calls great energy into your life. And that passion, he says he, he implants passion in you for the dream. The dream, passion causes you to have it in zeal, intensity, and excitement for the thing that we crave. What did he say here? I know it. I can see the clock. I don't want to see it. He said that he strengthens us because he creates in us the longing, the passion to run our race, that we are so craving to fulfill it that we're not letting go. I, hallelujah. So let's just pray right now and just receive Christ as your Lord and Savior if you haven't. Just repeat, repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me my sins and I ask your son Jesus come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>